What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another episode of Lions Latest, going through the latest Detroit Lions news. And today, we are here with some free agency news. Reportedly, the Detroit Lions, amongst other NFL teams, have shown interest in a current free agent receiver. So let's get it started. Welcome, everybody, to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we are back with some Detroit Lions news, or I should say a Detroit Lions rumor. I don't know if this counts as news or not. I don't know. It's one of those two things, and we're going to address it today. Now, this is kind of like just the beginning. All right, so if we find more rumors on this, especially connected to the Lions, we can dive into this again. Of course, if the Lions go out and sign this player, we'll definitely dive into a do a breakdown at some point on the player. However, I want to do a little bit of background research on this player. Of course, I was familiar with who this is. We've talked about him in the past, but I wanted to do some more background research because the last move that really happened, the most recent big news for the Lions to me was Josh Reynolds being signed by the San Francisco 49ers. That was like the last big thing to take place. It wasn't a Lions move, but it was like the last big thing to take place. And that was big because for the Lions in free agency, there's not a lot of spots that we look at on this team and say there's a need here. And while, again, like I said with receiver, I do like the pieces that we have, and if we went into a game with what we have, I'd feel fine with it. I feel like we could win with it. But it also definitely not only just leaves the door open for it to be addressed, I almost guarantee it will be addressed at some point in the draft, and I definitely think it could be higher than a day three pick. I think that's a real possibility. I don't think that's for sure. I don't think it's for sure because I think this draft class is very interesting. What makes this receiving class so interesting is just the types of receivers that you have versus this receiver that we're going to talk about today because this receiver we're going to talk about today a little bit is much different in skill set than a lot of the guys in the draft. I think there's a couple that have similarities where you're like, okay, I could draw similarities here. But for the most part, there's a lot of differences between this player's game and a lot of the guys in the draft. So you feel like you would get a very unique player that's in free agency right now, and that would be Tyre, Tyler Boyd from the Cincinnati Bengals. So here is the report that I read to make this video that said this, and this was according to The Athletic that said, Boyd has at least had preliminary interest from the Chiefs, Chargers, Dolphins, Lions, and 49ers. Now, it was also put out there that the Pittsburgh Steelers pursued Tyler Boyd, but apparently that just did not happen. I saw two different reports. I saw one report that said that they were looking to offer between 8 and $9 million to be like their number three receiver, and it just did not happen. It stalled out, so it sounds like it was a money issue. I saw another report that said two years, $10 million. I was like, okay, that's that's different. That's definitely different. Two years, $10 million is, is kind of low, I would say, for this player when you talk about the consistency. You're maybe not getting the number one receiver production, and that's not the expectation with this player but that does seem like a pretty low number if that's truly what they offered. So I've seen conflicting things there, but it does sound like it may not get done with Pittsburgh, but the Lions were one of the teams listed to have interest. Now, how deep is that interest? If there is interest, I don't really know. It could just be as simple as, well, Lions lost Josh, so let's just say that the Lions had some interest there. Maybe that's what it is, but maybe it's like, hey, Lions are actually like, yo, should we go look into this? It's a real possibility. We've talked about it before. The first thing I will say, when you look at the salary cap situations, according to Track for those teams that I just named, the Lions are one of the teams with the most salary cap space. Now Spotrick has us listed with over $26 million, which places a seventh in the NFL according to top 51 cap space. But beyond that, Pittsburgh Steelers at 14.9. Again, it sounds like they've already had some conversations. Kansas City, 26.4. They have the LA Chargers at $31 million, so they're doing, they're doing their thing, and they've also let go of some older receivers, so it could make sense that they'd want to address that. Then the Miami Dolphins sitting at $5.7 million, and the San Francisco 49ers at $7.5 million. So the Lions, not necessarily seven separating from everybody on this list, but they're, they're in the mix with some of the teams that have the most cap space to spend if the Lions are truly interested in going after this player. And then again, it comes down to how much is that price point. I would think that it would probably be around somewhere like $9 million per year. That would make sense to me. And it feels like it makes sense to if for the Lions' sake if they could get this done like on a two-year type of deal because of his age being 29 years old. like that, that seems like it would kind of make sense. But with that being said, I wanted to talk about this player a little bit and talk about why it may make sense and why it may not make sense for the Lions. And again, this is not a full deep dive on a player. I haven't watched that much of the player to give you that full deep dive, but eventually we can if more rumors come out. I just kind of wanted to hit this on the surface and get kind of the ball rolling a little bit. This is a six foot two, 203 pound receiver that posted a 4 5 8 40 time coming out for the draft. However, He's not that type of receiver. Like, that's not Tyler Boyd's game. And, of course, I think a lot of people know Tyler Boyd as the slot receiver with the Cincinnati Bengals next to T. Higgins and Jamar Pitt Chase. That guy played in a slot. I think as soon as you hear slot, you might immediately be like, that doesn't make sense. Don't go after that guy. And I think at times there can be some validity to that idea. I think at other times you have to look at the reason that he's playing slot, but then also what kind of skill set does he bring? Can he expand beyond that? Probably going to want to replace some of what Josh Reynolds brought to the table. And I think there's real aspects that Josh brought to the table that Tyler Boyd could as 
well. Some areas probably even better. Some areas not as well as Josh Reynolds. However, I still will make the point Antoine Green, and this this is why it could make sense on paper really, is because if you had Tyler Boyd and Antoine Green, and Antoine Green turned into what you hoped he could be coming out of the draft. Some of what, again, the level three, the vertical threat that you were hoping, that was where the upside was for Antoine Green outside of run after catch. If that started to connect, then that's really a lot of what you're losing for Josh Reynolds at level three area. And then you had Tyler Boyd as well. You could, in a way, kind of manufacture getting both of those things potentially back, even though in two different players. But again, Tyler Boyd, to me, in certain areas from what I've seen so far, obviously I've seen a lot more of Josh Reynolds, may do some things a little bit better than Josh Reynolds. But I think there's just a lot of similarities in general. And I would think the first thing they have to start off with is just a basic trait, and that's the agility that Tyler Boyd brings to the table. It's a big reason he's been so effective as a slot receiver, as well as pacing and route nuance, but the agility. And this is something that not only at the receiver position, really at every position, Lions seem to value this when they look at draft prospects, so just keep an eye on it, but definitely at receiver. Like Josh Reynolds, very agile receiver coming out at six foot three, but very agile. And you get a similar thing here with Tyler Boyd, a guy that doesn't have elite vertical speed. It's nowhere near the really the level three speed that you had with Josh Reynolds either. Even though Josh Reynolds wasn't looked at as a burner, that dude could take the top off his play speed, would still let him to be a vertical threat, and you would be definitely losing that with Tyler Boyd. You're getting a more physical body type, right? A thicker type of frame, still carrying some of that height, maybe a little bit shorter, but then also you still want to get that level three kind of vertical speed that you would have with Josh Reynolds down the field. With that being said, however, here's where I see similarities. So statistically speaking, as I said, you're not looking at this as this is my number one receiver. That shouldn't be your expectation, even though we've seen him play both slot and wide, mainly wide when there's injuries, but usually plays in the slot. I don't want to say slot and wide, and that makes your number one receiver. St. Brown's one receiver. He plays everywhere. However, I think when you just look at it statistically, right, look at last season, 67 receptions, only three drops, only an 83 pass rating when targeted, but this is statistically the numbers kind of say it all. He had zero drops in 2021, one drop in 2022, and three drops this past season. The statistics should say it, but very reliable hands. Then immediately, as soon as you start watching him, it's not just he's reliable and he shows strong hands in traffic and his fearlessness over the middle of the field, which again, I've went through a lot of, especially like the mid-round type of receivers. I'm starting to work into some of the back-end receivers where people are anticipating these guys to go, and I think he is very unique, not just in terms of that he has good hands, though again, I think that's first and foremost. It's the first trait that I look at. What are the hands? Because you know you don't have to be necessarily the best there to make it work in the NFL, but if that's bad, I'm immediately turned off. I'm like, I, I don't want that guy. Move on to the next, okay? It immediately scares you. Depending on what the issue is, it does scare you immediately. That's not going to be the issue with Tyler Boyd. That is an area that he's going to check most of the boxes because whether that is fearlessness over the middle of the field, which I've seen receivers that aren't. They, you know, they don't they don't want to get hit over the middle of the field. You'll see them looking for trap. There's things like that. You don't get any of that with Tyler Boyd. It's another reason he's so successful. He doesn't drop the football over the middle of the field. He's fearless. Body control is big time, which is another area I thought Josh Reynolds was actually pretty good as well, especially as a vertical threat. Back shoulder passes over the shoulder tracking, and then of course downfield post routes boxing guys out at the catch point. But for Tyler Boyd, you'll see a lot of this, especially with Cincinnati, made more in the middle of the field, but the body control is big time. Body control to kind of contort himself midair, he opens up some of the back shoulder utilization as well. So you get a lot of those traits that carry over with, again, very strong hands in contested situations, maybe even to another level than Josh Reynolds. So if you're talking about just reliable pass catcher with good hands, you could probably take that to another level here with Tyler Boyd. And again, that was something Josh Reynolds had. Up until the San Fran game, which was a rough rough finish but up until that game he had very reliable hands as a Detroit Lion and Tyler Boyd has brought that to the Cincinnati Bengals but look at the statistically or just watch him it's natural hand technique overhand catching underhand this was one of my favorites against Carolina where he just plucks it underhand technique, doesn't have to use his body and continues to move, running through the ball. Things like that, awesome hands. Now you move on to the separation side and he creates it in a little bit of a different way, I would say. Again, you're going to have certain windows close up. He doesn't have some of the take the top off type of vertical speed and even things that open up can close up quickly. I think against off coverage, you'll see it. He has to be kind of crafty with how he sets it up. I get St. Brown vibes here where if he's dealing with an off coverage cornerback and they want to sink and they want to just dive on his route, he's going to have to be very crafty in that setup where he can't just push him vertically, try to get you on your heels, plant and get back to the ball, he's going to be crafty with how he sets it up. Try not to give any sort of tell of when that break is going to happen, and then when he sinks back, like, hey, it's on time. Like, for example, here in this outside slot, you're going to see the route discipline here. He's going to try not to show that he's changing pace, shorten up his footwork, and sink himself back down. You can see the space that he creates. He's not pushing him very fast on the play, but it's very nuanced. And if you watch Cincinnati's offense, it does bring you a lot of vibes of, like, not everything's the same as lines, of course, but there's similarities. Like, you can definitely see similarities in the timing, and especially with Tyler Boyd, whether that's blocking utilization, where, you know, 
know, he'll step in line and goal line situations. The discipline that he plays is as a screen blocker. You'll see it out in space. He's a very good blocker. I know the Lions would love that. He'll step into the box. He was their guy that was used to do those things. So I know the Lions will love that aspect. But even just in terms of being a receiver and the similarities that he brings there, the timing was so huge for Tyler Boyd. And again, he was very capable as a level one, level two threat, much more probably successful there. What I liked about his ability to create separation was first off the body type physically. He plays with good balance at the top of the route. He can deal with physicality in coverage. That does open up flexibility to sit on the outside. You know, that way you're not just washed out of the play. There's certain guys, for example, Jamari Thrash, who I was watching today out of Louisville. That's one of the big concerns there. You look at his frame. It's like, hey, he's probably not going to put on much here. Same thing with Josh coming out. Didn't have a huge frame. And you're like, I don't know how much is going to be added to this. So he had to win in different ways. That's not really going to be much of an issue with Tyler Boyd. He has the play strength to really translate wherever you want to align him on the field. I love the way that he attacks leverage, and this is similar to whether that's trying to pry open leverage right off the release or whether that's on the play, you know, cornerback sitting inside, he wants to break outside, and he's able to lean into that to then, again, separate towards the outside. Gave me vibes of Sam Laporta, something that I thought he did well, where he's bigger than the guy that's usually covering him, but he would still attack that leverage. It's like taking on half man, and at that point, cornerback couldn't stick with him through the top of the break. You guys just falling over. You would see that from Tyler Boyd as a receiver. Sink at the top of the route. Again, a lot of this was set up, I thought, through the nuance of the stem of the route that he would create so you didn't really know when the break was coming he can be recovered on you'll definitely see it on over the top threat or over the top shots windows will close pretty quickly you'll see it underneath, the, underneath though as well for example you'll see it on more complex routes I think um, again the agility is big time and this helps him because he can maneuver around zone coverage he can work middle of the field he's not getting caught in traffic consistently however the flip side to that it helps him off the release the flip side to that is you know some of the burst and quickness out of breaks so whip routes you know he doesn't really bring tons of that so you don't get a ton of separation consistently even where if he's balanced gets the cornerback a little off balance recovery is going to be there so it's much more of a timing thing for Tyler Boyd and I think for Cincinnati it opened up so much of let's just put him in a slot you know let's put him on a three by one side let's put him on a three receiver side let's put him in the inside slot let's get him on a safety and now we can attack that because a very smart receiver and we know football intelligence is key for receivers in this Lions offense like you have to understand where I need to get to and you would see that whether that's through motion and all the movement that would take place pre-snap just knowing where to get to how to pace himself for zone hold make himself a target for the quarterback and then again some of the savvy that comes along with it here was a good example for me on this little comeback route and again one the hands here and you see the timing he almost like slows his body down to with the field awareness to like I want to stick this thing on the pylon he didn't get in here but he made the grab as an awesome grab but then also you see the savvy at the top of the route look back inside break down the comeback route has the ability to do that has the agility to do that but at the same time you see that little savvy to look back inside you'll see guys like St. Brown do those little things as well now, I did get the vibe that at times his pad level could rise a little bit and when you already missing some burst out of breaks that can lead to issues especially again when you're constantly working level one level two I hadn't watched enough to see consistently him working wide alignments or consistently working some of the vertical route tree that Josh Reynolds would with the line so I'd have to dive into that more but I do think that when you watch him you can see that the skill set the traits are there for a guy that in our offense while he's looked at as a slot and you're like oh that wouldn't work because you know that's not Josh Reynolds but the size is there and even though the vertical speed is and when you're talking about some of the deep out routes I'm not talking about speed out routes I'm talking about the deep out routes the 15 yards I'm talking about the deep comeback routes, working back to the ball for play action set, right? Golf hits his back foot, holds the safety, comes back, throws it to Josh Reynolds, puts it up high and away. Those kind of things, I don't doubt really whatsoever that Tyler Boyd could be successful because he still has the frame. He has more than enough physicality to deal with a bigger cornerback and his separation would be more about the timing aspect rather than running away from the defender. I'd question maybe some crossing success but in spots like that, for example, like that kind of route tree that Josh Reynolds has success in, I could look at that and say, I could I could see him bring that. The, the post-success necessarily to the table that Josh Reynolds would. I don't know that he'd separate enough to do things like that or be able to maintain a big enough window for the quarterback to hit. It'd be a money shot that you have to hit or everything would become contested. So I don't know that he'd live there as well as Josh Reynolds could. But again, now back to the release side of things, and a lot of times he wasn't on the ball. You play off the ball. He was always motioning, always moving around. But even with that being said, again, agility is huge here, and it opens up variety of release packages. You see the skip release, for example, that he can utilize. He can quickly attack leverage, and I think that he has a pretty good sense for like, all right, cornerback's in, out Outside, and then when he starts to release, he could see it. He's like, it's opened up. He's giving it to me. I'm going to attack that. Or, for example, um, okay, I want to pray... I want to use my first stab to get outside and push back inside, but the agility is there, so it's not a lot of stumbling. It doesn't take a lot of you know movement for him to position himself and really get the leverage that he's looking for. It's the little things, it's the subtleties in his route running. 
It feels like the guy that as long as it's within 12 yards, you could probably find success really regardless of what you're asking him to do. If you wanted to put him wide and the team was just playing the sticks on third down, you could have him just work it to the contact, try to separate and put it on time. If they're playing off coverage, again, he could set up with some of the nuance there. Once you get beyond that consistently, it might kind of waver a little bit. But then you're also talking about in normal downs with the movement, him playing so much inside slot, so many condensed looks. It'd be like having another big time slot opposite of Amon Ross St. Brown when you wanted to go three, four receivers. Heck, the dude lined at running back. So you'd have two, you know, guys level one, level two that can consistently separate and really eat up timing. And that'd be great for golf. Acceleration off the line isn't great. Uh, so you talk about attacking off coverage again, putting guys on their heels, not necessarily. And just acceleration to just run by guys. Speed release probably going to be a lim little limited in that package as well. Overall, this is a guy with the route savvy. You see the lean at the top of the routes. He has the blocking background, and he also does check a lot of the reliability things that the Lions would look for. Flexibility, right? When Remember when Dan Campbell said about Josh, right? We think of Josh maybe as one thing, but what I always loved about Josh and was the thing that I liked the most about him with the Lions was his football intelligence in our offense. So much of our route concepts are timing, right? The progressions. So for so much of it was Ben Johnson's ability to create the ability to, okay, we have this going here. We're going to take the defense's eyes here, and then we're going to go here, and then Josh is going to sneak through and kind of slide through, and he'll be open here. And you'd see that big third down conversion. And so much of that was timing to me. It was pacing. It was not running in the track allowing things to kind of hold, being disciplined, and finding that open window, and then catching the football. So much of it was that for me with Josh Reynolds, and that's what I loved about his game. And then what did Dan Campbell say? He brought up, oh, it's his versatility, because he can align in different spots, right? Yes, there is the true ability to just go wide and go one-on-one, -on -one, even though that's not really where he's consistently dominant. There are certain games that he just wasn't impactful. He had the ability to do that, especially if he was outmatched, if he outmatched the corner. He could just, you know, went off the release, getting over his shoulder to the pass, and I think he would probably live more in that back shoulder range, Tyler Boyd, but we've seen our guys do that. Now, it depends who we have, but like when we first signed DJ Chark, you know, I think it was the first game. We tried to go back shoulder to him. Like, we've tried to throw those passes. We just haven't always had the personnel for that. So he would open that back up a little bit. So it'd be different, especially when you start talking about the vertical, the vertical ability from what I've seen so far. I think it would be different, but I can understand why you would look at it and say, okay, I can see where the Lions would have interest here, especially if they do buy the Antoine Green could start to bring some things around. If you sign a guy like Tyler Borden and then you enter the draft, again, doesn't mean you can't draft a receiver. Draft the receiver, man, make him compete with Antoine Green. Who's going to make the team? We'll see. We know Green can return kickoffs. He's shown flashes of that. You guys have to battle it out. But then it really does open the Lions up, I think, to get any style of receiver. I think right now there is a little pause in my mind about like, okay, if you go with this type of receiver, right, then you're like, okay, now you're going to probably be relying a lot on Donovan Peoples-Jones to open up this aspect. So I think that he would open up a lot to, I can get any type of receiver I want. I don't think it's necessary. I think you can address receiver in the draft. But it just, it's just, he's a different type. He's a very different type from most receivers that I've watched. I think guys like Jalen McMillan has some similarities out of Washington a little bit I think there's similarities there right but I think that he is different than a lot of guys now run after catch he has a background of kick returns punt returns he played running back I think in college a little bit as well hasn't really been a returner in the NFL so I don't know that you're signing him for that uh, but you do see his utilization on screens and it seems like his vision is there though he may not you know necessarily threaten anybody necessarily he does play with some contact balance so it could open up a little bit after the catch um, but overall it wouldn't be like extremely threatening from what I've seen so far but I do think that this is something that would make sense to wrap this thing up if the if it was up to me if you said should the Lions be interested in a guy like Tyler Boyd I would say yes I would argue yes they should be interested in Tyler Boyd from what I've seen so far though that is not enough to do a full breakdown so just kind of keep that in mind but I would say yes from what I've seen so far I would be interested in Tyler Boyd but price dependent for sure I think a two-year deal would be honestly great a way that they would line up with the other receivers that we have under contract of course St. Brown's gonna get have to get his deal but it would really round out the receiver room going forward and what you know that you have for the next couple of seasons so that would seem to make sense to me but then there's also the aspect of again the 2025 is, is next year we got some cap hits you know that are really going to start hitting with some of the extensions that have to come along so I, if you told me the lines were interested I would like be like yeah that makes sense especially if their cap space is looking that strong and they're not looking to make it a ton of moves this is one that they could absolutely wait on it's not a must like oh we have to go get this receiver I don't look at it like that but at the same time, if they signed this, I think then you're looking at receiver in the draft. And even if you want to draft one or not, you could look at it and just say, there is really no type of receiver or certain trait that he has to hit because we're trying to get this back into the building. I don't think you really have that then. You can just go like, we love this receiver. Let's go this guy if we want to go after that guy. From what I've seen, if you lean on the expectation that Peoples Jones can give us the stuff over top, we know Khalif can at times in certain roles. Jameson becomes and continues to become that guy that we expected him to be, as long as maybe some Antoine Green as well. You're 
you're getting a much better, from what I've seen so far, level one, level two threat that probably can be more consistent, but also flexible so if injuries pop up than Josh. That's just how I look at it, though. And obviously, my opinions may change as time goes on. But I'm going to leave it right there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you, Prop, for watching. Tune in tonight. We're going to talk some draft in a mouth.